Do you want to upgrade your Toyota Tacoma stock stereo system to something nice like this Kenwood? Well, watch this video and find out how you can do it too. Let's go. What is cracking YouTube gang? Hope y'all are doing good today. Check out the video on that door that I painted. I am going to be doing something I have been putting off for a while now, probably, <laughs> it's been probably a year. It is my stereo head unit. You can see here, first thing I'm gonna do is take this off. So let's do that first. These are, maybe I got these at Harbor Freight, but these are uh, panel removal tools. I'm gonna try this one. All right, so now it's got to disconnect these. So there's little, little clips right here that you just push down and then pull. Push down on these. And then what worked best for me is just, you could just pull on it like that and it'll pull out. We got these out. Now there should be some screws in here that we need to take out. I think they're up there. I think they might, they might be out already. <laughs> yeah, looks like they're already out. So let's go on to the next step. All right, so there should be two screws right here. One, two, and then two in there. One, and then two, but they're all removed. Um, on your car they'll, or truck, they'll still be on there probably. My dad bought this truck off of somebody used, so they may have had an aftermarket head unit and then took it out once they sold the truck and put the stock one back in there and you could do that you know hold on to your stock unit you might want to when you if you ever want to sell your car you can just put the stock unit back in and keep the head unit that you bought and put it in another car that you have so anyways uh so yeah so now we just got to take this piece off right here or basically it's the whole stereo and there's going to be several connections in the back that we need to disconnect So now we got to disconnect the wire. So there's a antenna, and then there's these plugs. So you just push the little release button, and then what I found is just to um, just pull on the wire, and that'll release it. And one more down here. There you go, head unit is out. So I think we are gonna reuse this piece and the hazard button, because we obviously need hazard lights. So this whole bottom section is gonna be removed and we're gonna reinstall that on the new unit, but everything from here up is all stereo. So we don't need all that, this. So let's go on to the next step. Here are the wires, you got, uh, one, two, three, and then four. And the four, fourth one down here, the longer one, is the one that controls the, um, the clock and the hazard lights and the uh, seat belt indicator lights. So we're going to reuse this. this. These three right here are for the stereo. So these are the parts that we're going to have to use the um, wiring adapters for. I'll show you that. All right, so to get this piece out, I have seen people have trouble with this. Believe on top and on bottom, you have to pry it out too. So let me try doing that. Got it. So I'll show you the clips where it's holding on to. There's like tiny little bumps right here <laughs> on the top and the bottom. And uh, so you gotta pry it out there. See that? So that's what you're trying to undo. And then this side too. If you can 
see this slot right here. It's like, there's a little hole right next to that. And that's where it's grabbing onto. So we're done with this. We don't need any of this. We're going to be replacing the whole uh, face and everything. And like I said, you can save that if you want to reuse it for reselling your vehicle. I am not going to be reselling it, but maybe somebody wants to buy a stock head unit one day. So now, All right, so now we're going to move on to the next phase of the process. We got all our parts right here. Ordered this from Crutchfield. We got the Kenwood Exelon EPX395 MBT dual DIN size digital media receiver. And then we have uh, this is a uh, Scotch installation. This is for 2005 and up Toyota Tacoma double DIN installation kit. It's part number TA2053B. So this is going to replace the plastic part of the dash. And then I also ordered some other stuff. Um, I'm going to be replacing the tweeters as well. I'm going to upgrade the tweeters. This is the Metra 1987. Toyota and up and this is the wiring harness adapter I also ordered some speakers some 6x9s I'm going to replace the speakers in the doors but not right now we're just going to focus on the head unit and getting that wired up all right so what we got here I don't know if these are removal tools or what Ah, here's the wiring kit, wiring harness. I'm gonna need this. There we go. Okay, so what comes with the stereo? Uh, it comes with some screws. We're gonna need those probably. It comes with a microphone an external mic for when you're calling people on your cell phone and then it comes with these it comes with this wiring harness now this plugs directly into the back of your your new unit okay so it's going to plug in right here but you see these raw wires need to be um, need some connectors so that's where the adapter kit comes in okay this is the Metra um, 70-1761 and this is for Toyota 1987 and up okay so now that's what comes in the bag so we're going we're going this is going to plug into your stock wiring harness and then this end is going to connect to the wiring harness that came with the stereo so we got to put these two together they may look at all these wires and say, ah, I panic, but it's actually mostly speaker wires, so you don't even have to stress out. Here's the kit, the wires from the kit that, from Metra. There's two different kinds, actually. So there's a 10-pin and a 6-pin. So this one is 4. Forget about that. What I'm talking about is a bigger um, harness. So there's 10 pins inside. You might have bought one that only has 6. Regardless, if you have this one, this orange wire and this blue wire you're not going to use. This is for illumination, and the blue one is for a power antenna, so I'm not going to use these two wires. You can just fold them over, and you can tape them off. You can just get some electrical tape and just tape that off. The rest, um, these are all speaker wires. So you got one pair, another pair, two, and then the other harness is for the other two pairs of speakers probably for the back so all you have left is three wires super easy uh, power black is ground and yellow is remote so that's all we're gonna really need to do and here you go right here so those are the three wires that come out of the the harness that comes with the stereo and all the rest again they're just speaker wires so that's it the ones that we're not going to be using that came with the stereo is this um, power antenna, remote continuity, I believe, and then mute. So we're not, they're already taped off for you. So that's the way it came. 
Uh, let's see where it goes. Steering wheel. I don't have a steering wheel uh, remote input because I don't have steering wheel controls on my 2008 Tacoma. So I went ahead and invested in these fancy schmancy crimpers because I bought these as well off of Amazon and these are brass connectors. You could also use uh, soldering but I am terrible at soldering so I bought these instead and these work really good. All right, so the wires from Kenwood do not come pre-stripped for you, so I have another fancy schmancy tool that I bought. And this is a wire stripper, so. All right, the thing about when you use these uh, brass uh, butt connectors is that you don't need the wires to actually be that long. So what I'm gonna do is cut them down to about this length right here. This is the way they come. So you just cut them about halfway down. The reason for that is because this end piece is going to grab onto the uh, protection, the plastic coating, and then the middle part is going to grab onto the wire. So if it's too long, it'll uh, overlap into the other area and you won't be able to crimp it properly because this is going to grab here like that. All right, so the technique I found works best is if you take the, the um, brass connector and you stick it in the pliers first, the crimpers. And then uh, this is a 16 gauge wire, so we're gonna slide this in there. And then you're gonna crimp it. And boom, so you see how it's grabbing onto the plastic um, insulation. And then the next you're gonna crimp is the next piece right here. Then you grab it again and you do the next one. Boom, there you go. It's a good idea to twist the wiring just so it doesn't get frayed. Got the, the cramps on one side, so now I can just connect them together. Make sure you match the colors. So they're both purple, but one of them has a black stripe on it. So match the one with the black stripe to the one with the black stripe. And there you have connection. All right, so there we go. We got all the connectors done love how clean that is and a big mistake I always make is I always forget to put the heat shrink tube on uh, before I crimp the wires so put all your heat shrink you know cut it got a little box here off of Amazon I think and just pre-cut you know cut it slide it on and then crimp all your wires together and then you're going to heat shrink I do have a um, heat gun but I'm just going to use a lighter. So that's it. I'll just do that 10 more times or however many wires you got. All right. And there we go. All heat shrinked up. And now it's just ready to go into the car. Wiring harness is complete. There it is there. I'm going to go ahead and get a zip tie and zip tie this all together once I have it installed in the car. All right, so now that we got the wiring harness taken care of, we're going to install the stereo. There you go. So this is gonna replace the stock dashboard. It does come with its own instructions. This is just gonna go directly back into your new piece here. All right, so that's installed. Now you can put the brackets on, the side brackets. There's a left one of these and a right one. It'll say it on the thing, so this is the right one. This is actually the right side. And uh, this you're gonna kind of pivot on there, so kind of put it like that, and then turn it. See what it looks like from the front. Depending on what kit you buy, you are going to need to re reuse these clips. So the way I found that works best, so you have to pry both sides out at the same time. So get a tiny little screwdriver, use your finger to hold one side and use the screwdriver to pry the other side. So we've got all the clips off. Now you're going to 
reuse these clips, slide them onto the new piece. Okay, so next thing you want to do is remove this. When you get the stereo, it's going to come already mounted, so just slide this off. You're not going to need this. Kit also came with this. This doesn't work for this vehicle. And then the stereo comes with this mounted on there, and you need to remove this as well because this is not going to allow it to fit. So you just lift up the clips on top and on the bottom. See them right here, just lift those up and take that out. And the kit is gonna come with a new skinnier um, trim that's gonna fit around it. So that's gonna, that's gonna fill in that gap. So now you're gonna wanna slide this in here. And then you're gonna wanna mount it with the screws that came with the kit. So these screws here came with the stereo and there's different ones in there depending on what your application is. The way I'm doing this is sliding the stereo in and then I'm going to slide the um, trim piece in and it has little clips at the top and at the bottom. I notice this one doesn't fit very well. It's a little bit too wide and so it's kind of bending at the bottom because it's too big. There it is installed. Then we're going to put the brackets on, on the side. All right, so these are countersunk screws. You're not gonna wanna use these ones. Uh, you're gonna wanna use the flathead ones. That way they sit flat on the plastic. And the way I did it is uh, three per side, so two here and then one up at the top or at the bottom, depending on your application, um, that's gonna provide that balance there. So just make sure you have two and then one or one, top or bottom. Just want to kind of center it up in there. I don't okay, so the next step is to connect our wiring harness uh, adapter to the stock wiring harness in the truck. And it's pretty straightforward. Just match them up. Okay. And this one goes nowhere. And then the antenna wire that's going to connect to your stereo. So we have one extra. We're not gonna use that. That's for uh, steering steering wheel controls, which my car doesn't, my truck doesn't have. So we're gonna have a slight delay here because like if I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm missing these screws right here. The two that go way in there. So there's four, so I just special ordered them from Toyota dealership. And so I'll have to wait a couple days before they come in. And so I'm just going to let this project continue until I get the screws. In the meantime, I am going to clean this up with a detail brush that I have here and some Riot's interior cleaner. All right, so I'm just doing a little test connection here. I haven't actually fully mounted it yet. I just want to test to see if it's working and right now it's in demo mode so let's get it out of demo mode let's turn it off turn off the key all right so we turn on the key so to cancel demo mode we just push the volume button and you say yes or no so it's no yes there we go demo mode is off now it's on standby mode all right, so, so for the microphone, we are going to mount it somewhere right here. And it does have that clip right there, so you could, I guess, maybe I can slide it in here just to give me more clearance. Because it does kind of get in the way of the visor. 
So we'll pop this off and see if we can slide it in here. If not, we can use the sticker that it comes with. So you're gonna need to pop these off, All right? Once you pop those off, you'll be able to see the screws that are in here. And just take these off. Once we got the screws removed, we can pull this off. And then we can remove this whole plastic piece here. All right, so I just used my panel tool to kind of squeeze it in there. I'm doing, with, I'm doing this with one hand though, so. And then we can slide that out. And then let's run our mic. I'm gonna use this coat hanger to feed the microphone wire down here into the dashboard. All right, there we go. see if my little invention worked. I'm gonna have to take this panel off. All right, so here it is, got it. So now what I'm gonna do is untape this. You don't need to put a lot of tape because you're gonna need to be able to take it off. There we go. And I can pull my thing back out. Just pull my wire through and that's it. Now I'm gonna run it along the bottom of the dash. So I'll run it, tuck it up here. Up underneath here, I'll probably zip tie it or tie it to something. All right, so I'm doing the old trickery again. Slid the wire hanger down through here until I can see it down here. Then I'll just take this to the end and pull it through. All right. There we go. Pull it through. All right, so it's all pulled through. I'm just gonna fold it up and zip tie all the extra. Just clip that extra. Okay. Right, the first thing we'll put is this piece. Last but not least is this part. But before you put this, make sure you put this. Now you can put this on there. There you go. Cleaned up, cleaned up, cleaned up. Found the best way to put this is to look from down here so you can line up the, the clips. It's easier to see them if they're lined up if you're looking down this way. And so it's this piece, this piece, and then that piece. Putting uh, this piece back on. All right, so this piece is already cleaned up. Just need to spray it with some uh, detailer UV protection. All right, so that's all tightened up, installed. There's the microphone mount. Clears the visor. There's no interference there. And I think it looks pretty clean. Now we just gotta put the stereo back in. So let's hook it all back up. Here's where the mic goes. It says it right there. So it shouldn't be no confusion. And then these two you just match it up. And then the antenna wire. I'm gonna zip tie some of these wires together. All right, so we got a zip tie tape together. We are gonna have one extra connection that we're not gonna use. All right, so right before you snap it into place, make sure there's no wires being pinched anywhere, especially down here where your bolts are gonna go. So you got those two and then the ones in the back. And you can see the 
the uh, bracket there. So it looks like everything's good. So I'm just going to go ahead and push it into place. There we go. Now I can bolt it in. So I ended up having to go to Toyota to pick up these bolts because they were missing, like I said at the beginning. I ended up having to go to my local Toyota dealership to pick up some of these missing bolts. Paid $5.43 for them. These ones right here. All right, last but not least, I tried cleaning this up, but for some reason wouldn't get clean. So I don't know. Plug these back in. Push this back in there. And we should be good to go. All right, so there it is installed. I just gotta set it up and we should be good to go. I'll set the date and the time in another video. Let me know what you think.